Hello guys, and welcome back to another uh, edition to our uh, pick marker controller implementation. This is going to be part number two to our uh, infrared video that we had. We did the hardware uh, in the first video and now we're going to do some software. However, I do want to point out a couple of additions that I made uh, to the schematic um, is I went ahead and put, um, that way I'm making the video also of demoing this on a breadboard so you guys can see that as well. And so we need to know if, if our signal is getting across. So what I have done is I've added uh, an LED, just another LED to RC3 is what I've done. So that way I have some sort of um, indication. Okay, so I put that in. Then I also I, for, I forgot uh, our 10K pull-up for MemClear because I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, external thing. So I, I forgot that in the last one. For this one, though, uh, on, on our demo, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do the transmit one because, uh, you know, the transmit one is basically just, just an LED, you know, being driven by a transistor. It's kind of no big deal. So basically this portion right here of of this circuit will not uh, be there in the breadboard demo that I'm showing you, and I'll, I'll probably r remind you guys of that. But um, for all intents and purposes, we're going to pretend like this isn't here, and we're not going to code any of the transmit. We're just going to do receive. <coughs> Excuse me. That way, when I demo it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, make like a switch and push current through this transmitter LED and then this piece of the circuitry right here with receive going back will be the thing that interprets those signals so anyway that's basically what I got going on hardware wise uh, that was a little bit just a hair different from last time um, just adding that LED so now the now to the coding section of everything so now we're gonna pull up our code pull I did it in the MP Lab X uh, IDE so now we're, we did it with CCSC. Uh, this should be fairly simple and straightforward, so you should be able to transfer this to high tech C without a problem. Um, if you guys want me, however, to make a high tech C uh, piece of code and add it to this uh, pile in my uh, my link on my on my page where you can download code, I, I can do that. But it's it's pretty much the pretty straightforward. All we're doing is just blinking LEDs and stuff. So we're setting up our config register, um, setting up a delay. Um, that was more or less for kind of troubleshooting. I needed the delay, but anyway, setting up the internal oscillator for four megahertz. Um, d just doing some quick defines. Even though technically we're not using the transmit one, I went ahead and defined it anyway. Um, just habit. Um, and then there's our receive is going to be on C4, and then we've got just an LED that we threw in on pin C3. So set up our, our tri-state registers. Always remember to do this. Don't forget your tri-state registers. Uh, I've had a, a couple people um, contact me about uh, things not working and um, one of the things I see is uh, make sure you, you don't forget your tri-state registers because a lot of times you'll, you'll just you'll forget about them and um, oh and uh, it'll you'll forget about them and then they uh, they tend to uh, it tends to not work if you've got something but because I, I, I think default is all output and so if you're trying to input something like we are like right here with the one uh, you need to make sure you have that pin set as an input otherwise it thinks it's an output and you're it's not gonna work so make sure you set up your tri-state registers also um, be mindful of your pins. Um, let me run back to the schematic real quick. Be mindful of these pins that have multiple things on them. Um, I'll take this moment to, to say this too. Um, see how this one's just C4 and C5 and I don't think it has, uh, of course I have to look at the data sheet. I think there is stuff on these pins but look at these ones that have like they're an analog pin as well as a GPIO pin or heck this one's even a trigger, a oscillator, a clock out, an analog pin or it's a regular GPIO pin pin. You know, these ones that have multiple, multiple uh, functions per pin, uh, really take and make sure and look at the actual I.O. port, like port A or B or C or whatever, in the data sheet. Uh, there'll, be a, there'll be sections for uh, each, one, uh, each one of those. And make sure and, and skim through those and see if there's anything special you have to do. Like there's analog select bits on the ones that are that have AN, you have to either tell it to be an analog input or a digital input. If you're wanting to use it for GPIO, you have to set the analog selection bit register uh, or the bit of that register for whichever port you're wanting. Um, you have to set that to either digital or analog. And I think by default, if it's on like with like this one for example, the 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 analog ones, they're all set to analog. 
I believe. I don't think they're set to digital. Unless, no, no, I take it back. They're all set to digital. They are. Sorry, because I didn't have to do anything fancy adding this. Um, yeah, they're all set to digital. I, I'm, I apologize. Um, and so if you want analog, you have to set them to analog. You have to tell it um, what to do, what to set it. Now, one thing that is nice about CCSC is usually when you do the, s an the analog init or whatever, ADC init or whatever that initialized uh, thing is, I think that's what it does. It will set up the... Um, the, the analog ports and stuff for you. But just be mindful of that, that that's, that's there, especially when you get into chips that have like uh, the capacitive touch sensing module. So you have a port that could be GPIO, capacitive touch, um, analog, um, it could also be maybe a clock trigger port, it could be you know kind of like one of these, like pin 3 here that has a whole bunch of stuff that it could be. Well you have to tell it that no it's not an analog port, no it's not a capacitive touch port, no it's not the trigger, no it's not the, you know, no, 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 it's only GPIO, if that's what you want. So be mindful of those pins that are basically multi-function. Um, you may have to do specific uh, configurations to get them to operate the way uh, you want them to. So keep that in mind. Here uh, we don't need to do anything special except for s make sure we set up our tri-state registers and set up uh, the pin uh, pin 4 uh, to be um, or yeah or input 4 to be an input so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to initialize our LED what we're going to do is we're going to set it low um, I delayed for a second because I was I was troubleshooting you probably really don't need this in here I I'd, I'd missed and I, I forgot to uh, include my for loop ha 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 so even I make mistakes but uh, I forgot to include the for loop so it was basically running this little uh, thing only once and so the light was just always on and so it was it was getting messed up so I was putting some delays in to play with but it's yeah, it's always good to add a little delay maybe not a thousand maybe not a whole second but maybe just a little bit before you begin but so anyway I've got our for loop set up um, and then I'm checking to see uh, the input RX I'm checking to see if it's high and if it is, then we're going to turn the LED on. Uh, otherwise, we're going to keep the LED off. So, really straightforward code-wise, nothing real complicated this way. And uh, that's pretty much all you got to do. And then, based on that circuit, basically, pretty much the hardware takes care of all the light to electrical translation. And so, all you get to watch for is just whether it flips high or flips low. It's actually pretty, pretty slick, pretty slick little deal. So anyway, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably stop this video here, and I'll add another video after this one as the actual demo of it on the breadboard, uh, so so you guys can actually see it working. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for the coding portion of this. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this, and uh, there will be more stuff to come. Um, hopefully, like I said, I'll, I'll hopefully maybe uh, get some extra funds to be able to get some Arduino stuff and uh, maybe some ARM stuff, and we'll we'll play around with uh, with those guys as well. So, and then of course any other cool little things that I see that I think we should just go ahead and build and play with on here, I'll be sure to post that too. So, for the time being, take care, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, keep coding and keep on building this stuff. See you later.